Right, here we go again. This time, let's try and keep the camera actually facing on the buttons and on the screen. Um, so, said I'd do a video trying to show you how to get through track and field, some of the basics, some of the more advanced techniques, and just to get you through all of the different events uh, and to get you the qualifying level initially and then to show you how you can improve on that. I think there's a few events on here which probably people have a look at and they see and where they've obviously been used to playing it in the arcades and they haven't had many attempts to have a go at it. Things like hammer and high jump, just look at it and have no idea what to do. So hopefully we can get you through that as a result of the video. So a little bit of the basics about track and field. Uh, there are two versions of track and field that were made in the arcade. We have both of them here. We have the track and field American version, which is what I'm going to do the demo on. And then we've got Ali's track and field, which is the UK version, which is just here. Um, this one's having a bit of a rest at the moment because it's uh, it's developed some funny behaviours, um, but we're going to get that sorted hopefully sometime soon. So the basic principles of track and field pretty much everyone knows, hit your two button buttons as quickly as possible, press your jump button to set an angle or a height or something like that. Uh, most people compare it to the console version of Daily Thompson's Decathlon from back in the day. The two different cabs that we've got here, the first one was the American one was issued by Century in America and then Taytel in the UK. Uh, not really much else to say about the cabs. So let's just crack on with the game. We've got two setups here. So the one that I'm going to show you on, I'm going to set up, we basically get an extra life on the American version. That's just a dip switch setting that we've got on the board here. It gives people a little bit more of a chance to get through the levels. Some of the qualifying times are a bit harder on the American version, which is the one we're going to use. But because you get an extra life, it doesn't matter if you lose one. On the UK version, the dip switches are currently set to get no extra lives. But the qualifying times are a bit easier. That's the one we used for the higher score tables. So there are a few techniques which are used uh, for track and field. The one Ali and I use, which gets us far enough, is the basic... Hit two buttons as fast as possible. Look like a demented seal going at it. Um, there are another couple of techniques. There is the technique which the high score holder in here uses, which is Retro Dave Nintendo, if you follow him on Twitter. Uh, he basically uses a high wrist technique and scratches the button. So I don't know if you can get that quite there. So I'll do it with one hand first. So he swings up there and just scratches away like that. And he does that really quickly on both sides. And as I say, he holds the top scores in here, so he's naturally quite a good technique to use. Works really well. The actual world record holder uses a technique which I can't do, um, but I'll try and demonstrate. It basically, you, you might be able to find some videos of it on YouTube. So have a look on YouTube, see if you can find some, some videos of it on there. But basically what he does is he uses the technique where we're hitting one finger, then the second finger, uh, the same finger on the right hand, so that finger, index, middle, middle, ring, ring, like that, and he does that really quick on one button, so he's going index, index, middle, middle, ring, ring, like that, and he just does it really quickly. I can't do it, I can't get my brain around it. Um, there's a chap who comes in here who can do it. Um, have a go at it at home, see if you can get, get your head around it. I can't, so for the purpose of these, this demo, I'm going to use the slappy hand technique and I'll just show you the scratchy hand technique as well to try and get you through it. So I'm going to play as four players, naturally we're not going to be able to get through this with four players in one go, but I'm just going to kill off a couple of the characters, it will let me show you all the way through. So here we go. Left hand side's a bit dirty at the moment, so I need to get that cleaned up. But we're not going to use that side anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, 100 meter dash, really easy, nothing really to explain that. I'm just going to show you me hand, how I get through it and how easy it is to get through it just using the slappy hand, my main technique. And there you go, 9.34 seconds. Not the quickest we've done, 
but still a good time nonetheless. People, sometimes you see them coming in and they're trying to take it a bit easy and they're trying to just do that and try and do gentle tapping and whatever. To be honest, I was doing that for ages and could never get anywhere near as quickly as I do now when I just go mad for it. I think people are a little bit worried that we might start having to go at them and saying you shouldn't be hitting it that hard. Um, these machines have probably seen a hell of a lot worse in their time. Um, in the arcades, they used to have guard buttons there to stop people getting things like lighters and whatever and run them across the buttons. We've taken them off in here, so it gives you a bit more freedom to do that. So I'll just show you a scratchy technique. Oh, I'm not great at it, but it still works, even if you're not very good at it yourself. Um, let's... And there you can see. You want to be getting your speed to get sort of around nine seconds. You want to be getting your speed around about 900, um, 990 to about 1,110 here. Um, you can obviously get it beyond that, but if you want to go around that nine second mark, that's what you want to be aiming at. You want to be getting to about late 900 to 1,000 by 50 meters and then keeping it above that. You can see we've got 10.32 up there, which isn't a great time. It still qualifies, but it isn't a great time. Um, it's because the speed wasn't high enough down there. Practice that technique. It's quite an easy technique to do. And to be honest, it's, it, it gives you a, a little bit more longevity with being able to play it. Obviously doing this, you get quite tired. Um, by the time you get to the sort of third or fourth round on the game, and you've been doing that for three or four rounds, you're gonna be pretty tired. Long jump. So let's just do a quick example of long jump. What you're looking to do here is run up, and then you're aiming for about 45 degrees and getting before the line. Not the best example because we went over the line. Good angle, but um, got a foul because we've just gone over the line. So what I will show you is there's a little technique which you've got to keep your eye on with long jump. So if you look, as the runner's going along, you'll start to notice... It's not the best example to be showing here. You'll notice he freezes. See that where he's frozen and his legs aren't running anymore. At that point, if you stop running, the speed won't drop off. So I'm going to try and show you with this runner here. So let's have another go. So we've got the speed going. And then see he freezes. He just stops running. What you do is, at that point, your speed won't drop. So you can almost stop hitting the run buttons once that's happened. So we'll show you again on the next character. Speed up. Try and do it a bit slower so you can see. There, see that he's stopped running. Ow. And you'll notice the speed hasn't dropped off. If that hap that that's what you're aiming to do. So once you've got that speed up, as soon as you stop running, you can take your hands off and concentrate on keeping the speed up. Once he's jumped, keep hitting the run button, you get a little bit of a bonus for that. Ow. I've managed to fail twice on one character, which isn't a great for a demo. Um, I need to clean these buttons up a bit. Here, we'll just show you again. There, he's stopped running. Speed hasn't dropped off. So use that to your advantage. If you're not really great at getting your angles right, just use that to your advantage. Keep an eye on it and make sure you're hitting your, um, your angles right. So you're aiming at about 45 degrees. And go, I've just gone over a smidge again, and that's 44 degrees. But you're aiming at 45 degrees. And just give it a tap after you've, you've finished. So. There you go, and we should qualify. You don't really need a huge, well actually that won't qualify, it doesn't matter. But you don't really need a great deal of speed on long jump, you just need to get the angle right. So really, tr if, you, if you're not naturally getting the speed you want, try and concentrate on just getting that angle right. And let's just get player one over the line. That's not a bad jump. And then as you can see, the speed isn't huge there. Um, but we're still getting well over seven ball. Seven meters qualifying, we're getting 8.86. Oh, and again, we'll show you that. We're gonna let these two characters die off just so we can uh, go through the, uh, the demo a bit quicker. That's player two gone. And we'll just give you one last example, just showing you that I'm gonna take my hands really clearly off and the speed doesn't drop. So as I say, use that to your advantage. If you're not great at getting the speeds up, keep an eye on when he's stopped running, take your hands off and focus on your angle for your jump. Your angle is gonna give you a lot of help. 
Again, not a huge amount of speed on the last run, but still getting well over eight meters. Um, and we're just gonna let this. And we'll just get rid of the second character there. So the next event is javelin. So javelin, you don't get the time where the, the, the runner stops his uh, run up and so, so you can concentrate on the angle. What you do get is you get the countdown really down here. So you can use that to your advantage to know when the, the, the throw, you need to make your throw. Now, for this, let's give a quick example. So that's not actually great. What you're aiming for on javelin, and the angle you're aiming, that's not a bad throw, I said that. Um, the angle you're aiming for is about 40 to, you can get up to about 45, but optimum is about 40 to 43. So let's just show you here. Oh, I fouled, that's no good. And again, we're just tapping the buttons afterwards. Give you a little bit of a bonus there. So let me try and get it down. Yeah. Bottled it a bit there and threw a bit early. So another thing to know, still not a bad throw. Another thing to know about javelin is you get a bonus for every successful throw you do. So you'll, if you get the first throw in, the second throw, assuming you get it in, you get about 5% bonus. Put myself under pressure now, so I fell three on one player, two on one player, sorry. So put a bit of pressure on myself. Now, another bonus to know in javelin is if you've got a successful throw, or you've got two successful throws, you can always aim for getting the alien. And the way you do that is you take a run up, you get a bit of speed up, and then you hold the button down to 80 degrees. And what you see is the javelin will go out of the screen and you'll get an alien. And for that, you get a thousand points. Generally, the better players don't tend to do it because they want to keep the bonus up and get the further distances and get more points. But if you know you've got a fluky one in terms of getting the long distance and you want to get the bonus, go for that. Oh, it's foul three of them with one player. That's no good. Luckily, we've got the life and we can keep using the example. Foul. So the next one is hurdles. Hurdles catches even the best players out because hurdles, if you hit one hurdle, you can pretty much ruin your entire run. So what I would advise for new players is just to use one button. So try and use that one button and try and concentrate on just getting over the hurdles and getting home and then big sprint for the end and as you can see there even though we've jumped every jump um, we're still only just about making it through um, put yourself under a lot of pressure here because I've now got to get him through it while showing you the other technique so the other technique is obviously to use both hands to do it but I'll just show you how much harder it is we're going to lose this player and the reason that is is because you lose momentum the whole trick with hurdles is to try and get your jumps started at the right position and carry the momentum over the hurdles like in real hurdles really what you're aiming to do is jump about sort of a couple of meters away from the hurdle and then carry the speed over if you jump too close to it you jump up in the air and it won't work hammer so I've done a little video on hammer before. As you can see, you don't even need to press any buttons to start a hammer. You just let it go. And what you're doing is you're aiming to press the throw button about halfway into the last square. So you see a lot of people hitting the run buttons in the build up to hammer. You don't need to do it. You just press it to start and watch it. Watch him spin around and all you're waiting to do is see when that yellow bar gets halfway through the blue square, a little bit over the top then you can see it's gone wide but the first example was better and again you're aiming for about 45 degrees on this and again you want to be tapping after you've hit the throw it's annoying i haven't got the second player through to this so i can show you but again we'll just try and show you here so it's building up we're not pressing anything we've got away with that one and there you go it's really simple once you've got that once you've got this measurement here sorted out so you know where you're going to be throwing it it's simple 
you're literally just waiting for it and pressing the jump button and then double hitting your run buttons. So, high jump, which is my sort of event. Again, similar thing to hammer. You do not need to be running or bashing away on your run up. It starts itself. And what you're aiming to do is jump as close as you can to the bar and ignore this angle. This angle is a bit, it's not really an angle. I don't know why it's really there. What it is, is when you're pressing that jump button, you're pushing the, the jumper over. So I'll show you here. So we're getting as close as we can to the bar. We're pressing it. Don't worry about that. Legs go up and then we're pushing him over. So I'll show you that again. This is where I'll end up fouling high jump. So we're pressing run. We're getting as close to the bar, we're letting him jump. His legs come up and we start pushing him over. It's fairly simple. Again, it's one of them events like hammer. Once you've seen it and you you've seen someone do it and you realize how it's done, it's pretty easy to do. So I'll just show you again. We're pressing the run button. We're jumping as close to the bar as we can. Wait for his legs to come up. And once his legs come up, we're just pushing them over. It goes in two movements. First, the legs come up, so they sort of go like to that, um, that position. So they're from there to there. And then they come to flat, and that's when you finish it off. So I'll just show you again. I'll show you those sort of two movements. So we've got legs hanging down, legs up, and then whole body up, and you can push him over. Now, you can get to qualification on this without even doing any like any special technique so we're up to 2.36 now so i think we could probably do that as well so we'll just do that one last time oh no i've ended up knocking it over Ow. well i better start showing him the proper technique to doing it now seeing as i've knocked it over twice so to get higher on high jump what you do is you press the run button after you've jumped so you press jump and then you press your run button you'll see he's getting much higher there just show you that again so we're pressing run pressing jump and we're tapping and he gets higher and higher the more you tap the quicker you go if you hadn't been doing that tapping you haven't been tapping to get him higher he would just be hitting the bar by now and i'll try and give you an example that in a sec so we're jumping pressing the button and over he goes. Just gently pushed in, watch out for the movement, watch for his legs to initially come up, and then wait for his whole body to come up to finish it off. So again, to show that again, pressed it, his legs are coming up, so we're moving him. Oh, gone for it, didn't press it fast enough. But there you go, that kind of gives you an example. If you're not pressing this fast enough, he will hit the bar. We've qualified, so it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this demo. And that's it really. I mean, I'll go, well, I'll try and go through another round just to give you another example of getting through everything so you can see the techniques, perhaps without me waffling over them, and, and so, so you can see what's going on. I've only got one player to get through all this now, so this will be quite interesting because I can't really foul too many of them. So, again, back to running on, I'm going to use the slappy hand technique. See by now, I'm already up to about a thousand, and we got down. So we got to that thousand pretty early. We got that time, that speed of 1,041, and we're down about nine seconds. Long jump again. Let's just go through it. Speed as quickly as possible. See the guy frozen. Gone a bit past the line there. Got distracted by someone out the window. Um, but there you go, 45 degrees, it would have been quite a big jump if we'd have put it over the line. Let's go again. And you can see there, I took my hand off the run buttons pretty much all together, just to focus on the angle there, because I knew if I'd fouled another one, I'd have been in trouble. So I took my hands off the buttons quite early, quite an early jump, but got 44 degrees, and we've qualified by miles there. Again, that's going to be similar. A little bit more, maybe. You actually get bonus in long jump if you hit three jumps exactly the same length. I would say there's absolutely no point in attempting that whatsoever. You should might as well just go for the longest jump you can each time. Javelin. Javelin actually gets quite hard quite quickly. Um, 85 isn't easy. So I haven't got much speed there, so I don't think we're going to get much. We might get near it. Yeah, not, not really great. 
And again, with javelin, I would only say bother going for the bonus if you're really confident. I would just use each jump uh, throw. Yeah, I think I'm going to miss this. Yeah, a little bonus, but won't get me over. The arms are getting tired, so that is one of the problems with doing the sort of slappy technique. Is your arms do get quite tired, and I think I'm going to end up falling short. Oh, I might have got one out of the bag there. Yeah, by the smallest of margins, a metre and one. But that's something you've got to consider if you want to keep playing this. And look, you might have heard that little ring there, by the way. It means we've got a bonus life for um, getting over 100,000 points up there. So something to consider when you're choosing your techniques. If you think you're going to be able to do it loads and loads and loads, you might want to do um, this. I'll just show you another technique with, which I use with the hurdles. Uh, which is this sort of... I don't know how you describe it, but hopefully you can see it. Um, Again, I'm not going to qualify that. Hurdles is incredibly hard. Um, the, when most people come down here, I think when Dave came down here, who set a higher score, it was hurdles that finished him off. It's basically because you need to be absolutely rapidly quick and get all your jumps right. There's two things you're looking at there, really. Whereas the rest of them, you can kind of concentrate on one thing for most of the time. To have to concentrate on the jump and the run the whole way through the event is quite difficult. So we'll just show you that hammer again so we're just waiting we're waiting we're waiting we're not doing anything here and it's not the best angle but you've got the speed now so that'll be fine so you see a lot of people sort of trying to do it halfway because they're panicking yeah okay you, you you might get you might get once or twice you might get away with it but once you get up to higher levels you can't really finish halfway down here, you've got to get to the end, and I think once once you know how to do this, so once you know about getting it halfway or three quarters of the way through that square, your chances of doing that once, one, one in three times, which is all you really need to do to qualify, are pretty high. So I wouldn't bother. I would literally just wait until it gets to the end and give yourself the best chance. So high jump again. The annoying thing with high jump is you can't select what height to start at. It's really frustrating because we're going to start at 2.15, we've got to go up to 2.38, so it's going to take me a little bit of a while to show this demo, but let's just crack on with it anyway. So I'm just going to show you we're not doing anything here. We should I think we're probably about to get 2.36 without, without using the run buttons. But I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just give you an example. So I'll show you this one without me pressing any buttons and show how high we get. So. Still a bit of clearance there, and then I'm going to show you, even though it's jumping up a height, I'm going to show you how much clearance you get when you hit both the buttons. So here we go. So plenty of clearance there, and that's even though that's gone up five centimetres and we've still got loads more clearance on it than in the last round. Let's just see if you can get away with qualifying without using the run button. Oh, clip up. That's probably my fault. I jumped too close there. Ow. So you can get a bonus in high jump. There is a little um, ten, a thousand point bonus. The way you get that is you foul your first two jumps. Literally just start running and jump straight away and fall over and still qualify. And you get a thousand points for that. Again, if you're not overly confident, don't bother. If you're brilliant at it and you know you're not going to make any mistakes, go for it. I sometimes do it, depends on how tired I'm feeling. If I want to go for my 247 record, I generally tend to keep all three lives to give me a bit of flex. So we've got over to 237 without having to run. It's probably going to be, yeah, I've probably jumped a little bit too early to do 238. We might have made it if we'd have jumped a bit closer. So let's see how far we can get. So again, the two techniques you can use Doing that scratchy technique, I'm not great at it, but again, we're over there at 239. The technique I use with this, it's a little bit harder because you've got to kind of keep two fingers on one button and two fingers on the other, but I do generally... I just keep that sort of two, mid those two fingers there, just gently tapping each time to push them over whilst I'm still hitting away. So let's just show you again. Two 
Ja, muss ich einmal halten. Let's just see how well we can get. I'll show you the other technique as well. <laughs> I'm not great at it at all. Probably should have used that hand. But yeah, so you'd, you'd be doing that. So I'm going back to the slappy hand technique. There you go. Don't think I'm going to make 247 today. at all today, might need to give the buttons a bit of a clean up, me blaming the machine, and there you go. So hopefully that's been helpful, if you've got any questions or whatever off the back of that, let me know. I think I'm going to move, well I'll put a vote up, I'll see what game we'll move on to next. Daytona has become quite popular in at the moment, we've just put it up on the scoreboard, so uh, we might do a, I might do a little demo on how to get through that. I say, any questions at all, or you want any more information, or is there a particular game you'd like to see, let us know. Thanks for watching.